The diagnosis of Parkinson's disease itself in the early stages often represents a major psychological challenge. For many people, up until that time, their only knowledge of Parkinson's disease is the image of someone who's got very severe Parkinson's disease and is markedly disabled. So they may assume, for example, that that's going to happen to them very rapidly. They may also know nothing about treatment and assume that they can't be helped or assisted in any way. So education is a very important part of the early management of Parkinson's disease. For some people, the, the issue of accepting the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease can be overwhelming. And for a while they'll be tempted to deny that it's happening at all. I don't have a problem, I don't need to seek assistance. Whilst that strategy can work for a little while, and maybe even for a little while can be helpful, eventually it can bring things crashing down when the Parkinson's starts to cause problems. If someone with Parkinson's disease is suffering from depression and or anxiety, the most important first step is to acknowledge that that's a problem in its own right. That acknowledgement can take the form of seeking help yourself, but ideally would involve engaging others around you. So talking about it with your loved ones, who almost certainly will have noticed that there's something wrong and would love to know what it is. They can also be of great assistance in helping you to, to go forth to someone like your general practitioner, a psychologist or a counsellor, to get assistance. Some of the techniques that we might use in treatment can be boosted if the care is also involved. We know that people who suffer from Parkinson's disease are at an increased risk of both depression and anxiety compared to anyone else in the general population. This is probably due to a combination of factors. Parkinson's disease itself is of course a stressor, it involves multiple adjustments at different points during the course of the illness and can affect a person's functioning dramatically. Parkinson's disease also affects, in at least some people, areas in the brain that we think are uh, crucial to the control of mood and emotional states. So in any given person, it may be that the depression is more a reaction to disability or more about the brain disease, a biological problem if you like. Probably for most people, it's a bit of both. Depression is a clinical condition or problem that requires uh, rapid acknowledgement and treatment. Typically, depression involves the sufferer feeling low in their mood, sad or hopeless, or losing interest in everything every day for at least two weeks or more. They may, they may then have other problems like poor appetite, loss of sleep or loss of interest in usual activities. Sometimes they get feelings of guilt or worthlessness and even sadly occasionally feelings that life itself may not be worth it. That latter problem in particular means that they need urgent assistance. Anxiety is a separate clinical condition involving a pathological level of fear or apprehension. Sometimes this might take the form of worry and fear over any number of minor issues during the day. Sometimes, particularly common in people with Parkinson's disease, it can take the form of panic attacks, sudden severe episodes of anxiety that come out of the blue. Depression and anxiety are separate but frequently occur together. So perhaps 70% of people with depression will have some symptoms of anxiety. Those people who have an anxiety problem alone are at risk of eventually becoming depressed. 